Hi everyone, welcome to today's lesson. In our previous lesson, we discussed the plot of the novel The River Between uh, by Ugugiwan Tiongo. And today, we are going to be looking at the characters and the role that each character play in the development of the plot of the novel. Uh, we have a lot of characters in the novel and many of them play significant roles and we are going to be looking at the roles one after another. The first character we are going to be discussing today is Wayaki Chege. Wayaki is the son of the Eda in the story, one of the Edas in the story called uh, Chege. And uh, he is the pro protagonist of the story. And Wayaki is a young Gikuyu man from Kameno. In the previous lesson, we discussed the rivalry between Kameno and uh, Makuyi. Why Makuyi is overrun by Christianity, Kameno still adhere to their traditional African uh, beliefs. So there was tension between them. Please, you can search for the video also in the channel and uh, uh, listen to it so that you get full understanding of the, uh, the plot of the story. So, uh, protagonist of the play is Wayaki. Sorry, protagonist of the novel is Wayaki and is a young Gikuyi man from Kameno. So Wayaki's father, Chegi, believed that Wayaki is a natural leader and is the one prophes that was prophesied about because there was an ancient prophecy concerning the people of Kameno that a Messiah will be born and the person is going to rescue them, going to free them from colonial exploitation. And only two elders are aware of the prophecy, Eda Chege and Eda Kamboyi. So, Eda Chege believed that his son Wayaki is the prophesied one, is the Messiah. And uh, he is going to liberate his people from the colonialists. And that was why Chege sent Wayaki to Syriana to go and learn in the school established in Syriana. So that he will learn the knowledge of the white people and then use it to fight them. But unfortunately, though he learned there, and we note again that another elder called Kamboi also sent his son uh, Kamau to the to Syriana to go and learn the ways of the white men. So later they learned for years in Syriana, and then they were expelled from the school. Why were they expelled? They were three that were expelled from Makuku, uh, Maku, uh, from Kameno village. Uh, we have. Kintui, Kutia, Wayaki, and Kamau. They, they were expelled because their fathers were still practicing paganism. And the authority of the school, which is a, a Livingstone, the a character, the only white character in the story, believes that okay, they cannot condole uh, a, the children of uh, the, the pagans anymore. So we saw that Wayaki, Kamau, and his friend Kintria now return to their village and then build up a school, Mashoris. Yes, they build up a school and then they began to teach the, the children uh, of their village, Kameno, uh, how to learn, how to study. And then education become a major force in the community of Kameno. And what really happened between uh, the characters and especially Wayaki was that he fell in love with this daughter of Joshua called Unyambura. Joshua is a Christian fundamentalist who has disowned his tribe. He does not want to have anything to do with his tribe again. And even the uh, female psyche institution that the people of Gikuyu do, which is their identity, Joshua has denied and disowned all. So when Wayaki fell in love with her, the daughter of Joshua Unyambura, it was, in fact, Joshua disowned the daughter for even accepting to marry a pagan or to fall in love with a pagan. And then the people of Kameno also were angry with the Wayaki that how can he fall in love with a Christian lady that is uncircumcised? So this clash led to the downfall of Wayaki. The, the, the tribe now became the big, those who saw him as Messiah began to hate him. And then when he was even asked to deny or to, to renounce his love with Unyambura, he refused. 
And then what happened? Later, he, he lost his leadership and then Kamboyi and his son, Kamau, now became more recognized by the people. Sorry. Now, we have another character in the novel, which is Chege. Chege is the father of uh, Wayaki. He is a well-respected elder of his tribe. And he presides over a lot of ceremonies, a lot of uh, wedding ceremonies, and a lot of other key decisions in the Kameno village. So, he also knows all the prophecies, including the invasion of the white people with their clothes like butterfly, and also how a savior will come and save the people of Kameno from the encroaching uh, culture of the white people and at the same time preserve their cultural heritage and not accepting and not fall victim of Christianity. Now, another character is Joshua. In fact, Joshua can be regarded as a religious fundamentalist in the novel because he took his Christianity to the extreme level. In fact, he became more extreme than the white people that brought Christianity to the village of Makuyu because he disowned his daughter Mutoni, who accepted to be circumcised. Who, though Mutoni was a Christian, but he accepted to be circumcised uh, to follow the culture of the Gugui people. But the father who has disowned the culture, has disowned the tribe, has disowned everything. In fact, to the father Joshua, to, to Joshua, everything being practiced in the court, in the tradition of his people are paganistic and sin. And so whoever engaged in it has committed sin. So the daughter Mutoni later underwent the circumcision and then uh, it became complicated medical issues. Be, uh, her head became worsening and then later she died. And even when she died, Joshua did not care, does not care at all because he believed that she died as a sinner and he cannot celebrate or mourn the death of a sinner. And also, Uyambra, who is the, the first daughter of Joshua, fell in love with uh, Wayaki and then the father also disowned her because he does not want the daughter to fall in love with a pega. Does not want to be unequally yoked, uh, be yoked with uh, anything that is called paganism, and uh, even when the, the 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 wife, Miriamu, was talking to Joshua, Joshua does not listen at all, and even the mother of uh, uh, Uyambura also talked to talked to her. Uh, that the father Joshua will not accept this, but he continued, and the relationship went on until both Josh, both um, Wayaki and uh, uh, Unyambura were later uh, uh, challenged by the people. So it's a religious extremist, Joshua. Then we have another one called Mutoni. Mutoni is also a significant character in the novel. He is one of Joshua's daughter. However, instead of following the Christian way of life, she follows the traditional path and chooses to get circumcised to become a woman. So she questioned the criticism of her father, who is also circumcised, but who was allowed to convert to Christianity anyway. So this, she exposes the hypocrisy of the Christian leaders who consider circumcision as a sin. So when Joshua disowned her, after learning about her plan, she stays with her aunt who supports her. However, this circumcision led to a lot of medical complications and she later died. Now, we have another character also who is uh, Unyambura, Yambra, who is the older daughter of uh, Joshua and uh, Wayaki's love interest. Although she's older, Uyambra lacked her younger sister's Mutoni's uh, courage or resolve. So she disagreed with Mutoni's plan to defy Joshua and be circumcised, but to maintain her love for her sister. So after Mutoni is dead, Uyambra is overcome by loneliness and long for a partner. And that was, that was what led to the relationship uh, between her and the Wayaki. So she remembered Wayaki's kindness to Mutoni in her final days and realizes that uh, she want to be with Wayaki. Though she struggled to call it love, Uyambra comes to believe that uh, Christ alone will not be enough for her. She must have Wayaki as her black messiah, or she will never feel complete. However, when Wayaki asks Uyambra to marry him, she refuses because she's afraid of her father Joshua, who will never approve and she does not want to disobey him. Over time, Uyambra realizes that though she loves Christianity, she hates Joshua's militant practice of it. She ultimately chooses 
to defy her father in order to be with Waiyaki, causing Joshua to disown her just as he disowned Motoni. And however, because Nyamura is uncircumcised and a Christian, the tribe of uh, Waiyaki also were against her. Because they believe that she's uncircumcised and shouldn't marry to somebody of uh, Waiyaki status. And that was uh, what led to the problem between Waiyaki and uh, her tribes. Then another character in the novel is Kamboi. Kamboi is an Eda from Makui and Kamau's father. Kamboi begins the story as a devout Christian and one of Joshua's followers. However, he leaves the religion after Joshua disowned Mutoni for undergoing the tribal custom of circumcision. And then callously uphold this decision even after she dies of an infection. You can see how bad Joshua is. So disturbed by Joshua's behavior, Kamboi wants to protect the tribe from the corrupting influence of the white colonialists. But he is jealous of Waiyaki's influence and the way the villagers have regarded Waiyaki as a teacher and a messiah. So he suspects that Waiyaki may be that savior which infuriated him. And what did he do? He planned to bring Waiyaki down. And the cowboy grow to hate Waiyaki so much that he want to kill Waiyaki and work to undermine his influence and authority among the people. So he create the Kayama to defend tribal custom. The Kayama is a group of people that protect the purity of the, uh, the, the people, of the Gukui people. And one of the things the, the Kayama hold in high esteem is that every female child must be circumcised. And now, uh, Waiyaki want to marry a lady that is not circumcised. And that is against the oath of the Kayama group. Kamboi force everyone to take the oath. Everyone practicing paganism to take the oath. To make sure that they uphold the culture and the tradition of the Kuki people. And what happened? He later succeeded after using the song Kamau to spy on Waiyaki. And then Kamau discovered that... Uh, Waiyaki was going out with uh, 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 with Unyambura. And then we saw Kamboi succeeded in bringing down uh, Waiyaki. But he was not able to lead the group, the tribe, as Waiyaki was doing. Now we have another one, Kinutia. Kinutia is also a major, um, a, a major character in the story. He is a close and a loyal friend of Waiyaki and a teacher at Mario Shoni. Kinutia loves Waiyaki and thinks he is a great leader, but he often wants his friend of imminent trouble. But Waiyaki never listened to him. Waiyaki never take it so serious. And then at the end, Waiyaki was taken away. And when Waiyaki was taken away, Kinutia was so bitter and uh, worried. So another character is Kamau. Kamau is Kamboi's son as well as Waiyaki's friend and later became the rival of Kai, Waya, uh, Wayaki for the love of Yambura. So Kamau studied under the white missionaries in Syriana with Wayaki and Kinitua for several years. So after they are bound from the Syriana mission for having pagan parents, Ka Kamau helps Wayaki build and operate their new school for Gikiyu children in Kameno. So however, Kamau grow jealous of Wayaki and then uh, he was so concerned about Waiyaki's influence. And because of that, plan, he planned to fall or to, to, to bring down Waiyaki. And later, he succeeded after telling his father that Waiyaki has fallen in love with uh, uh, Unyambura. And later, the people gathered and summoned Waiyaki to renounce his love with Unyambura, but he refuses. So Kama also succeeded with his father, Kamboi, bringing in bringing down uh, Waiyaki. Livingstone is the only white Christian missionary and the only new white character in the story. Livingstone believes he is enlightened compared to the earlier missionaries because he does not try to force the Gikuyu people to abandon their tribal rituals. That is, other than female circumcision. So, circumcision represents the call of Gikuyu identity which Livingston see as opposed to Christianity. So thus, Livingston embodies the subtle method of the colonialists throughout the story. As 
they quietly move in, steal land, and impose their own government on the Gukuyi tribes people. Why did the living to expect the children that have pagan parents? Because you just want the influence of Christianity to spread. And those children have refused to accept Christianity, and their fathers as well and family have refused to accept Christianity. So the purpose of setting up the school is to advance the cause of Christianity. And that was why when they failed to succeed in converting the parents of the children to Christianity, they expelled the children from the school. And that uh, was not so good. The another character is Miriamu. Miriamu is Joshua's wife and the mother of Yambura and uh, Mutoni. Although Miriamu respects Joshua, she primarily fears him. He often beats her because Miriam was uh, circumcised when she was a child. She was beating Miriam because of the circumcision that took place when Miriam was a child. So, and you could see the, the level of uh, uh, religious extremism of Joshua. So, we saw that uh, when Mutoni dies of an infection following her own circumcision, Miriam grieved for her, lost daughter, and appreciate Wayaki's care for her, contrasting with Joshua's callous dismissal of his daughter's death. So, however, although she says she respects Wayaki, she does not want Uyambra to marry Wayaki because she believes that will lead to a lot of crisis. And eventually it led to crisis. Now we have Wayaki's mother. Wayaki's mother is, uh, is the third wife of Chege, the father of Wayaki. Although she appears very little in the story, she outlives Chege and warns Wayaki that if he marries Uyambura, the tribe will see it as a great betrayer and they will destroy him. Though love does not let Wayaki listen to the mother, later Wayaki fell to the top of his enemy and he was eventually destroyed. So in our subsequent lesson, we are going to be discussing the major themes in the novel.